the Brit or the Port? Why do you always get to say where we are? Because I'm the specialist. Bridport, that's where we are. Okay, okay. Do you know, even know where Bridport is? No, I do world? not. No, no I do exactly. not. Exactly. So I, the funny thing is, I drive these places, but the, geographically, I have no knowledge to where they are, just how far they are from our location via uh, the iPhone sat nav. I just like to make a um, active observation. This day is a weekday. Oh, there seems yeah. to be a huge amount of people on the streets. So I don't know what's happening. Are people taking a week-long holiday for the old king, king, king? Or are they just like, I don't know, the sun's out, so they have to pop out? I don't know what's happening. Watch but out. it's ludicrous. Anyway, um, no clothes. Look at them all. Look at them all in the background. Exactly. How dare they go into charity shops and buy clothing mm-hmm. and help charities? I found this, right? It caught my eye because it looks a bit pop arty. I'm going to talk about it close up in a minute. It is a vase by this designer lady here. She makes... Um, lamps. Tina. And look, the lamps are really expensive, but she also makes this vase. And I found it in a clear style to show you. Retail is $64. It was £5.50, which was new. Austin does open the box in a minute. The only comp I can find is this one for something that is completely different, although looks really quite cool. From the same designer? Yeah, from the same designer. Um, it's, it's interesting because the box gives that pop art like that. Even It's like almost, if it, you were getting a tattoo, that's almost like yeah, circus the, the, carnival print. The the colours, yeah, yeah, no, I agree. It's it's, it's eye catching. Let's put it that way. It doesn't look necessarily cheap. And he got Austin pulled it out of the box, and it was a like a neon pink colour. And I thought it's gonna be, it's got to be in some way cool. I think the actual styling of it in the merchandising pictures was was not great. If I'm honest, I agree. Um, And in actual fact, you when you you showed the uh, not a comp, you showed the clear piece, the uh, the clear version there. Mm -hmm. On the side, there's three different colours. There's this, the clear, and there's something else. Yeah. And this was obviously the the orange and the. Pink. Yeah, it had, well, actually, it's only one colour, fascinating enough, but when it hits the light, it looks two different colours. But on the box, it's both colours, that's what I'm trying yeah. to say. Anyway, I'm going to show it to you, and we're going to split off in a minute. I'm going to show it to you under the studio lights, so you get a better understanding of exactly what it is that we are looking at in the box. Cool. I just wanted to show you this vase that we purchased. In all my studio lights, because i got a wide angle going. But it's called the Ghost Bars Vase. It's made by Innermost, um, but it's designed by Tina Lang, and it's basically a Perspex vase, but um, I was attracted to the box, because the box was giving, you know, that whole, like, 60s, mid-century modern, like, pop art vibe, and when I looked it up, I could only find pictures of the clear one, but it still looked cool and clear, the comps were good, it was quite expensive as, like, a contemporary vase. So I thought, oh, yeah, let's just go for it. And then we set it up outside the box. Um... <laughs> I can't even... It's not the most amazing thing uh, you've ever seen. I mean, it's not... I couldn't find a place in my home for it. Um... Because my home is just not that pop arty in colour. It's very, like, muted. But it is fabulous so it's a vase and the flowers literally go into the glass vase that's a glass bit these just slot in together and obviously so when the obviously i guess so when you haven't got fresh flowers it still gives the illusion of flowers i'd love to see it with flowers in um and interesting enough it's all one color but it's just how the light hits it so i put it near window um but i want to show you it and there aren't any listed, there aren't any sold. There's another vase by this artist. Um, another art, uh, vase by this artist. It's completely different. It's grey concrete. And that's listed for 80 used. This is obviously new. We've only taken it out to take pictures of it. Um, so I'm going to try and... I'm going to try and get as close to retail as I can. Because I just think it's really stinking cool. And then, obviously, when we were going to pay, Austin went appearing into the cabinet and he found some sunglasses. They call me Hawkeye. They call him Hawkeye. These are Oakleys. Oakleys are really interesting. And when I was actually researching them, these are £15, when I was researching them, I found some really interesting comps for some really interesting sunglasses. So I thought we'd take it to the white table again. I also wanted to give you a close up of these. These are the Oakleys that we picked up and you didn't really get the chance to have a quick good look at. So they're sort of like, hello, they're sort of like bug-eyed uh, oval 2000s 
uh, sunglasses. As we all know, the wraparounds from Oakley do really well, like the ski style and the outdoor style. But this Y2K framage is really coming back. So you've got the O's on the um, arms there. And then in the middle, you've got the Oakley spell out. Um, which is apparently more premium, a better thing to look out for than just the, the um, O itself. Um, serial numbers are all on the inside as expected. We pay 15 for these. Comps are sitting at about 150. So Oakley makes some really interesting sunglasses. Um, they do these really cool ones that like wrap around the head. So they come down and they go for about four grand. Um, so it just depends which ones you come across or or get you can see there the arms are like rounded they're very interesting um but they're not something to write off i know they had like a little dip for a while especially the clothing and things like that um but something well worth looking out for so some of the oakley's there which i, which I kind of remember from being younger um, even the one of the last comps, there was a picture of like um, what would be like a like a cask or a crate, or they were called the vault at the time, the Oakley case, and inside was like a real kind of uh, solid foam, and the outside was actually solid metal. They were really heavy, um, but those can go. They're just the case itself can go for multiple hundreds. So keep your eyes up for and Oakley's lenses. kids and so even if lenses. You've got yeah, like a pair of that have got battered frames. The lenses can be worth money. I know. E even the yeah, even the. Um, uh, the, yeah, the iridium lenses specifically, yeah, the kind of meant. the more kind of crazy colours. Anyway, um, back to this shop. With this is the YMCA. I actually really, really respect this shop. I found this. Polka dots are always in fashion. This is four pound fifty, and it's from Agnes B. If you don't um, know Agnes, throw get to know the logo up. They make menswear and women's wear. Very nice French tailoring, if that makes sense. They make everyone wear. Everyone wear, yes. Uh, £4.50 into... Uh, that's a plain white one, so I'm going higher than that. Yeah, obviously. I would agree. Have you ever met me? Um, I have. A cross list over to Vestia Sadly. as well. That is an older label, the one in Austin's hand. Um, and when I was photographing it, it has gorgeous back pleats, which sounds like a really stupid thing to say, but these little like Detailed details... Detailed details make it the, the bigger mm -hmm. picture. And I just imagine it on, like tucked into something. It'd be great. Found this odd... I look annoyed at that hanger then, didn't yeah, I? Yeah, well. Um, found this odd molly top um just a little cotton like uh ruffle, <laughs> ruffle. i'm oh. just remembering what we what we found with this top yeah austin rain on my parade and found a hole yeah thank you austin but it gets um, better doesn't talking it talking of holes found this elizabeth and james thing um silk uh like coined oh it was, honestly it was amazing that's really nice it the embellishments are lovely a elizabeth and james is uh, a gaping hole in the back gaping elizabeth and james is a brand uh from mary kate and ashley i never say their last name right so you say it olsen um who the are twins. the founders of the row um as well um it's a great so those brand. are a few brands to look out for um but try and get ones without holes in. That's I mean, my... I mean, ideally, yeah, I, I wouldn't necessarily go for the holy ones. Talking of holes, um, this was a basic tee from LK Marky, um, who make great, great stuff. Um, very contemporary, yummy mummy, I would say. Even their sort of basic t-shirts still go for good money. Throwing the logo up now. Um... When we got home, we noticed it did have a unusual mark on it. Um, so we are going to launder it and see what we can do we, with that. Yeah, we are indeed. However, it was only three pounds. This was a cos mint green utilitarian style zipped. Number. Yeah, like it was. It was shell as well, wasn't it? Yeah, it's really nice. We're doing really good with uh, cos at the moment, especially the utility stuff. The sort of like very stuff that reflects what they have in stock now i agree but not what they have in stock now yeah well, i guess i guess that's like trainers you can find an older pair of trainers from like 10 years ago but as long as they kind of they've had a resurgence or they're more they, they look like they're something that they've released recently mm -hmm. you're on a win aren't you yeah, it's the same with like new balance when new balance are bringing out the yes exactly souls the older new balance was still selling and, because and people now wanted a slice of the new balance and now they brought out pretty much every new balance style that they've had in their back catalog as well as new stuff so that's why it's always a really good idea to be keeping up with current trends and keeping up with what these if you're more into high street brands keeping up with what they're selling and what's in store now across the board just as a, like a, a, a rule of thumb for selling any kind of clothing if you're aware of any kind of fashion or trends it will help you sell fashion because of trends it sounds like such a silly thing but no it, it, like for like... a lot of people who do clothing they're not, they're not into clothing it makes it so much harder to, to kind of not only sell, but also if you have no idea of what people are wearing, how can you possibly buy 
for people who are going to be wearing it. Yeah. Do you understand what I mean? Picked up. Well, I didn't pick up these. I just physically picked them up um, to show Austin. The I love these labels. They're just so they're really fun, cool. They? Um, they had these listed as vintage. Um, Ralph Lauren um, for seven pounds. They they're not. They're not. Um, they have like a newer style vintage label. And they got a white one as well there, and but that one was just listed as standard Ralph Lauren. So uh, that one's red one's vintage. The white one's not vintage. Okay? They're literally the same shirt. Just so. <laughs> a, 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 anyway, I think um, what that's, that's the thing. Like with tags and stuff, I think sometimes if you don't know, just don't mention it. So from a charity shop's point of view, just don't say it. Yeah, just leave it. Yeah, yeah. You know, found this cos dress was really nice, but if it wasn't twenty pounds, um, did you do, uh, I don't know. I I I'm not going to speak on inflation of prices in charity shops. I do think they have got more expensive recently. I'm not going to lie. I do think they have. But, don't you? But I think every now you know everything but I think else? Every Everything's got more expensive. I've heard, I've heard a lot of people, Instagram, YouTube, just in general, talking about how charity shops have got more expensive. I've got I've got a couple of words for you. Anyone who is moaning or has an issue with it, including us, which we do, sack up. Sack up. Oh, no, I know. i got a good idea. Instead of telling people to sack up, no. um, hi, hi, we can higher our prices. Because that's is, how inflation works. The, the, the thing is, if, if if charity shops are charging £15, people can't argue anymore on eBay. Oh, I can buy this in a charity shop for a fiver. They can't, because you can't anymore. So use it to your advantage. Yes, you've got to spend a little bit more, but with all due respect, if you're if you're a business, inverted, inverted commas, business person of any kind or a reseller of any kind, surely once one... One one of the things you should be looking to do is find things they've missed because they're not they're not uh, in you know they're not they're not perfect they'll never be perfect with pricing and they'll never get everything spot on so you'll be able to pick those things up but two even if you have to spend fifteen pound on that top if it's worth eighty what's the problem yeah like there is no problem no. just just be confident and, and know enough that you can be able to do that I think moaning like I said we we've, we've been we've been um, guilty of it in the past. But moaning that things are getting more expensive, like if you, I think if you, you instinctively do it because obviously you go from because you notice it, yeah. less to more. Anyway, I found these trousers good for me. Talk to me um, about these. These have got a label in that just say pants, and I was just showing Austin. They're a linen blend trouser. They got a really nice button fly. I think they were like four pound fifty. You always shout at me for calling pa- uh, trousers pants as well, yeah, which is hilarious. Um, and I ju- I looked at the wash tag to see if they were made by, and it distributed by Forte Forte. So I'm going to talk to you about Forte Forte and some their tags me again from my white table these are these linen trousers that we picked up in that shop that i have flung over my shoulder and i wanted to show you the labels close up so that's the only label i saw i knew this obviously from just from manufacturing manufacturing knowledge you can see they're nicely tailored but this as a material for tags say they produce like even to produce a hundred of these that's an expensive tag. It's cornered, it's stitched in each corner. You've got the uh, metallic stitching as opposed to a print. Um, and it literally just says pants. Now, I, using my brain cells, there's not a huge amount of companies that are going to be called pants. It's also an Americanism for trousers, obviously. Um, so I thought it might be a niche American brand or something like that. You know, one of these high-end sort of like uh, interesting brands. Then I went to the made-in label. Um there's not much you can tell from this side. I mean, their linen is a good material, but they're also viscose, which, you know, is here and all there. Made in Italy, quickly. And then here, distributed by Forte Forte. Now, we'll add comps, obviously, onto the screen. We'll add uh, what this company makes and what this company does. But it's always worth looking at this beautiful tag. I know sometimes that the inside tags are always are cut out, um, but there's other indications. Like, I know, for example, I've had... Um, a shirt from this company that has this same label that says shirt so it's just becoming used to how different companies and different high-end companies do different things and niche things to them uh, uh, Maison Margiela for a pure example is that sometimes she doesn't even have a tag she just has the points of stitch um, and it's just becoming accustomed to how different companies do their logos do, do their labels do even little trademarks in stitching perhaps or uh, logo in the buttons or the style of the tailoring or maybe if it's like a Prada piece you've just got a red line or something like that um but all you can always refer to the wash tags if they're present um it's also a good uh way to indicate anthropology pieces because uh because if it's say it's a brand like Meadow Meadow Rue or um Indian Cold if it's produced 
for anthropology on the tag it will literally say distributed by anthropology for indian cold and that will be a piece that was sold in an anthropology store as opposed to being a standalone piece from their collection interesting i maybe hopefully interesting wouldn't you say i would say i also looked at this dress uh, by bella dow dow um and comps on ebay are pretty uh, atrocious however retail is quite high selling john lewis and harvey nichols See? so i wonder if it i wonder if it isn't just well established enough yet I, in the reselling market no to... i was just yeah exactly that i was just gonna say maybe it's not that maybe the resellers who have sold it have sold it cheap because there was nothing to comp to are you are you you and they don't use retail. Feisty this evening. Would you not agree? Um, human. You, you, you're talking about something we had a massive no, conversation yeah, yeah, yeah. about before, I as regards as regards the comps and so on. So I don't know the <laughs> crouch and hold. I wanted my own. Look move. at that. So, um, <laughs> I added. Well, no, I do this anyway. But I Austin actually got it on film. I hold the edge of the rail, crouch to steady on, yourself on my old old severed knees, and um, <laughs> and I rack through them because I'm shorter than Austin. I don't necessarily have to push back on the clothes, and I get lower. So that's the technique. I mean, if you've got good get knee low. elasticity. I don't. Um, I don't either, but, but I still like, do it. Uh, anytime, anytime I, I do any kind of um, uh, squatting motion, people <laughs> will all, will look at me. Because, Why do you because do squatting motion? When I get down to, uh, to do some of these rails, what I'm saying is you will hear the creak or the crack yeah. and people will look at me going off like, uh, was that your knees? I'm just, yes. I'm just thinking about you squatting now. Well, I also creak and crack, so deal with that. <laughs> Talk to me. Anyway, this is a hush top for twenty pounds. It's new with tax, to be fair. To be fair, it's new with tax. And if I was to buy it, like if I wanted to, you know, wear that to a summer party, then it's good. But this is good. But let's not moan about it being twenty quid, eh? I'm not moaning about it being twenty quid. I'm moaning about the fact that I want it to be less. Anyway, this is a Marnie by H. No, this is a Marnie by Uniqlo. Well. Well I've been waiting to buy, find some uni, my, some money by Uniqlo. I want to find that piece for me. Okay, cool. Just so everyone's fully aware in the room. Um, the the check and the colour block pieces seem to go for a little bit more. Um, it's because more money esque That's why. Yeah. However, like the JW Anderson collab, um, they do command some decent money. Um, and this was Cos new label. We did leave this one behind. Um, even though I'm adamant on picking up all new label. Explain Cos, to the folks at home why. Because it didn't match the current trend of the website so I didn't think it was set as fast boom and so lang lang it was given pretty and small and you know not very cosy No, oh, exactly cosy I like saying cosy you said um, cosy it makes you think of swimming so oh, yeah. anyway moving, moving on so we left that one behind and we took the money and the money should get us about 35 to 40 pounds back from our how much was it I don't know five uh, six quid what was the money oh you're gonna see it you're gonna show us you're gonna show us Oz uh, four pound fifty. Oh, what a bargain! It has a little mark there, which uh, a wash. yeah, no problem at all. It's already out, already out. It's done. given me like a schmuck. The back, the, yeah, the back, the back, the back um, button detail was really nice too. Yes, I would wear that if it was um, my size. Austin also picked this up to show you folks at home. This is a Barber William Morris collaboration. Uh, they wanted 30 bucks for it. Um, I mean, it was a good size, actually. Um, I actually... I may be in a pool. I actually put up comps in a minute uh, for the wax jackets because now that is something you might want to look out I, for. I don't doubt it's a barber wax jacket, no matter the collab. It's going to be money. But, Go on. Sorry, but the other pieces didn't seem to be commanding any such money. No, that's actually a really nice jacket. I like, actually nice, like the, the red uh, velvet. What I was going to say, though, was... Um, I think William Morris, I think with all the different collabs they've done, whether it's H&M... It's done. Or, or the, all the stuff they've sent to charity shops of recent times. Honestly, I think you've, I think you've messed yourself up. I do. Yeah, stick to the wallpaper. Yeah. Um, anyway, Austin also saw this. Um, it's the yellow bag. I can spot my mile off. That's just my job, guys. That's how I roll. That great leather vibe. Anyway, this is a Rebecca Minkoff. Rebecca Minkoff is a handbag, predominantly handbag designer, although it does make clothes as well. High-end luxury leather goods. US. Big in the USA. Um, a few years ago, it was really like banging. Oh, look at that. Talk off. to me. Um, that's a Gudrun. Um, 
uh, like kimono style linen jacket. Um, back to this bag really quickly. Um, the, they this took a while for Bethany to, yeah, to see the actual really logo. Uh, old eyes. Anyway, old um, eyes. <laughs> they do these. They're famous for doing these dog clip closures. They wanted seventy five pound for this, which is actually. You you probably get a squeeze you squeeze a hundred out of it much more popular in the US, um but I don't get why it was seventy quid just hanging on the edge of a rail I'm not gonna mind. no it hit, it hit, no I hit my soul and to be honest with you but once again like the current market value of those bags is not great. Talk to me about this. Oh, it's really funny because we keep picking up Oakley sunglasses and I keep selling the spare Oakley sunglasses cases separately and Austin keeps getting annoyed at me because every time I sell an empty Oakley sunglasses case, he finds a pair of Oakleys. Side note, those deep Oakley ga uh, glass cases, I've said this before, buy them up if you see them. Like uh, we sold the chunky pair of Oakleys recently and they they fit in there perfectly. The ones we bought more recently in this video, they're too small, but the big ones are so hard to find, uh, hard to come by. If you can find them for under a fiver, Pick them up. Um, I saw the last one for 25 plus. Just posted. the case. Just the case, you yeah, know? Yeah, just the case. Um, anyway, that was us. Um, I hope you enjoyed the little snippets of more information. Just thought I was keeping it jazzy, keeping it, keeping it, uh, dipping and diving, keeping it relevant. <laughs> Bye.